the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, consumer confidence indices run by Sri Lanka's Institute of Health Policy dropped marginally in August 2024 compared to previous months. The Asian Development Bank's Development Outlook report revised Sri Lanka's GDP growth for 2024 up to 2.6%, owing to faster than anticipated industry expansion. Its gains upon gains at the Colombo Boers as both the ASPI and S&P SL20 closed in the positives for the fourth straight day, crossing the 4 billion threshold for turnover. And the IMF approves a new $7 billion loan for cash-strapped Pakistan, more than two months after the two sides said they had reached an agreement. From Studio 24, here's Anuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Three consumer confidence indices run by Sri Lanka's Institute for Health Policy dropped marginally in August 2024, compared to the previous month. IHP said in a statement that the index of consumer sentiment, the broadest measure of the public views on personal economic status and the national economy, decreased by three points to 30. The index of consumer expectations, which tracks future perceptions, fell by four points to 31, and the index of current conditions, a measure of perceptions of current conditions, dropped three points to 28. The decrease is primarily due to growing pessimism about the country's prospects over the next five years. All IHP Sri Lanka opinion tracker survey consumer confidence indices range from zero to a potential maximum of 100, with levels below 50 indicating net pessimism. This CCI estimates are based on 19,233 interviews conducted between the 21st of October 2021 to the 7th of September this year, including 1,150 interviews conducted in August of this year, with sample sizes varying between indices depending on response rates. All estimates are adjusted to be representative of the national population, including gender, age, ethnicity and income level. The Asian Development Bank's Development Outlook report has revised Sri Lanka's GDP growth for 2024 up to 2.6% in the first quarter. Industry expanded faster than anticipated long slide modest growth in services and agriculture. Forward-looking indicators suggest continued robust growth in 2024 and beyond, supported by looser monetary policy, better public financial management and progress in debt restructuring. Downside risks include a loss in reform momentum and delay in finalizing debt relief agreements. Sri Lanka's inflation remained muted in the first half of 2024 and is now forecast to be lower this year than projected in April. Following the value-added tax rate hike, the Colombo Consumer Price Index edged up to 6.4% year-on-year in January before easing to 5.9% in February. The inflation forecast for 2025 remains unchanged on the expectation of faster growth. Downside risks in Sri Lanka include delay in finalizing debt relief agreements, unpredictable weather and spillover from geopolitical tensions. Meanwhile, the sub-regional economic growth forecast is unchanged from ADO April 2024 and slightly lower for 2025. The growth outlook for most countries in the sub-region has either unchanged or improved since April. The International Chamber of Commerce Sri Lanka yesterday announced the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding with Port City Colombo. This strategic partnership aims to enhance collaboration in promoting Port City Colombo as a prime investment destination for local and international investors. The MOU signed during a ceremony attended by leading business figures and dignitaries outlines a framework for the ICC to extend invitations, sponsorships and host events and seminars that spotlight the unique opportunities offered by Port City Colombo. This initiative is geared towards attracting potential investors from Sri Lanka and around the world, fostering a thriving business environment in this transformative urban development. As part of this partnership, ICC members and nominated parties will gain valuable opportunities to conduct business within Port City Colombo, enabling them to leverage its state-of-the-art facilities and strategic location. The total employment in the tourism sector, including indirect employment, rose by 11.24% year-on-year to 429,641 employees in 2023, according to the provisional data of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority. 
In the year, direct employment in the tourism sector rose by 7.3% year-on-year, reaching an all-time high of 204,591 employees, with hotels and restaurants accounting for 80.9% of this figure. In addition, the travel agents and tour operators accounted for 7.4% of employment, while the airline industry employed 4.2% of the workforce. Tourist guides made up 3.6% and the public sector employed 1.1%. This data is based on a survey conducted by the SLTDA covering 6,569 tourism establishments in the country. The SLDTA said these figures highlight the significant role of hotels and restaurants in providing employment within the tourism sector, reflecting the industry's reliance on hospitality services. In 2023, the annual room occupancy rate rose to 39%, compared to 30.4% recorded in 2022. However, this figure remained below pre-pandemic and pre-crisis levels when the country recorded a mid-70% annual room occupancy level. Furthermore, there was a decline in the average duration stay of tourists, which fell to 8.4 nights from 9 nights on average a year earlier. Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is a nightly business report. Welcome back to the nightly business report. It's gains upon gains at the Colombo Bowls as both the ASPI and S&P SL20 close in the positives for the fourth straight day, crossing the 4 billion threshold for turnover. To get a summary for how the market performed today, we now connect with Minal Vikramage from First Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a roller coaster of movements of heavy buying and selling, yet ended the day on positive terms. The market ended at 11,671 points, marking a 12.16 point increase from the previous session with a larger turnover of 4 billion rupees. The S&P SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 31.99 points to end the day at 3,399.44 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors, with high turnovers and crossings recorded on Hatton National Bank. East West Properties and Commercial Bank. The top five gainers for the day were National Lanka Finance, Blue Diamonds Jewelry, Industrial Asphalts, Asia Asset Finance, and SMB Leasing. The top five losers for the day were Orion Finance, Trans Asia Hotels, Pegasus Hotels, Ambient Holdings, and Bhagwan Talawa Tea Plantations. The Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing and Services have seen an expansion of 50%. To get an understanding of how this reflects upon the labour market and the economy, we now have with us Zaima Jihan from First Capital Holdings. For the month of August, Sri Lanka's uh, Purchasing Managers Index recorded expansions in uh, index values of both uh, the manufacturing and service sectors. Uh, the PMI for manufacturing recorded an index value of uh, 55.5, indicating an expansion in activities, uh, however, at a slower rate. Within the sub-indices, uh, new orders and productions uh, saw expansion led by manufacturing of uh, food and beverage sector. In line with this, uh, stock of purchases also expanded during the month. However, uh, employment decreased on a month-on-month -month basis while uh, suppliers' delivery time continued to lengthen during the month. Uh, expectations for manufacturing activities over the next three months remain positive, uh, primarily due to the optimistic outlook uh, on the year-end seasonal demand, uh, in spite of the uncertainties that emerged amidst the elections. Uh, PMI for services was recorded at uh, 65.2, expanding at a slower rate uh, similar to the manufacturing sector. Uh, so significant improvements were observed across various sectors, uh, particularly in entertainment, recreation, wholesale and retail trade, uh, transportation and financial services, while uh, telecommunications, real estate and uh, IT consultancy services uh, maintained the activity levels. Uh, there was a notable increase in uh, new businesses, especially in uh, personal and uh, financial services. 
Uh, looking ahead, expectations for business activities also remain positive for the next three months, supported by the favorable macroeconomic conditions. Gold prices steadied in Asian trade today, remaining close to record highs as focus turned to an upcoming address by Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, while key U.S. economic readings also loomed. Spot gold rose 0.2% to $2,661.78 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December steadied at $2,685 an ounce. Spot prices briefly hit a record high of $2,670.52 yesterday. Metal markets were pressured by an overnight rebound in the dollar as the greenback surged from over one-year lows amid persistent speculation over just how the Fed will reduce rates further after a 50 basis point cut last week. Among industrial metals, copper prices steadied after a recent rally to two-month highs as sentiment over more stimulus measures in top importer China cooled. Oil prices steadied in Asian trade today after clocking steep losses in the prior session on signs of a potential pickup in Libyan production. Brent oil futures expiring in November rose 0.1% to $73.51 a barrel, while West Texas intimated crude futures rose 0.1% to $69.73 a barrel. But prices were sitting on strong gains this week, especially after top importer China announced a string of stimulus measures aimed at shoring up growth. U.S. oil inventories also shrank more than expected, presenting a tout outlook for markets. Both contracts say 2% yesterday but were sitting on strong gains over the past two weeks as they rebounded from near three-year lows. Oil was boosted by an escalation in tensions in the Middle East as Israel kept its offensive against Hamas and Hezbollah. The Sri Lankan rupee has strengthened against the US dollar today. Commercial banks' buying rate decreased from 296 rupees and 54 cents to 294 rupees and 31 cents, while the selling rate fell from 306 rupees and 25 cents to rupees 304. Well, we'll look at how Sri Lanka rupee performed against other global currencies. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Hong Kong's home career Cathay Pacific has announced a new winter schedule for 2024 and 2025 and now will be operating four return flights per week from the current three between Colombo's Bandar Nayak International Airport and Hong Kong from the 2nd of January 2025 to 1st March 2025. Cathay Regional General Manager for South Asia, Middle East and Africa Rakesh Raikar said they also have plans to further increase the frequency to five return flights per week from the 2nd March 2025 to the 30th of March 2025. These flights will be operated by the airline's Airbus A330 aircraft, equipped with flatbeds in business class as well as premium economy and economy cabins. Customers wishing to continue their journey to onward destinations can connect on to flights to other cities via Cathay Pacific's home hub, Hong Kong. The additional frequency also means additional belly capacity for cargo services from Colombo. This increased capacity allows Cathay to offer more priority shipment solutions for the Colombo market, meeting the growing demand for efficient and reliable cargo services. AIA Insurance proudly announced the launch of AIA Save Smart, the smartest and highly customizable life insurance plan designed to meet the diverse financial needs of Sri Lankans at every stage of life. The launch event was held at Cinnamon Lakeside, Colombo, and the event was graced by the Executive Committee, Senior Management and Top-Tier Sales Force of AIA Insurance. AIA Save Smart stands out as the smartest choice for anyone looking to secure their financial future. 
The plans can be uniquely tailored to the specific nature of the customer's savings requirements, providing unparalleled flexibility. From funding a child's education to building a health fund or planning for retirement, AIA Save Smart caters to the savings needs of different generations, ensuring a comprehensive solution that grows with the client. In addition to its investment benefits, AIA Save Smart offers a wide range of health and protection benefits, ensuring that all individuals' unique requirements are met with the highest level of care and attention. Having partnered with some of Sri Lanka's most reputed health and wellness partners, including Flash Health, High Octane Fitness Gyms, Siddhalepa, My Dentist, Vida Medical Clinic, Unilever Purit, Vision Care, and Doc 990, AIA is the only insurer in Sri Lanka to offer customers such attractive offers and discounts to help them stay active, healthy, and happy. Haley's takes this top spot in the 31st edition of Sri Lanka's pioneering listed company rankings for the financial year 2023-24. With a consolidated revenue in excess of 436 billion rupees, the conglomerate secures the top spot in Sri Lanka's version of the Fortune 500 this year. Occupying second place on the podium with a top line of nearly 342 billion rupees is Commercial Bank, while LOLC takes third place with a consolidated revenue of over 337 billion rupees. Meanwhile, Ceylon Tobacco Company takes top billing in the profitability rankings with a profit after tax of over 27 billion rupees, followed by Hatton National Bank. Carson Cumberbatch's bottom line of 22 billion rupees sees it take the number three spot in the most profitable listed companies in 2023-24. In addition to the listed company rankings, the annual MLMD 100 Special Edition will cover the national economy and performance of Sri Lanka's leading listed companies in the financial year 2023-24. In response to rising international student enrolment, the Australian government has introduced a national planning level to cap new student admissions at 2023 levels for 2025. However, the newly introduced limits will not affect the Swinburne Foundation or Unilink diploma programs offered by Nabloka College of Higher Studies. This decision intends to facilitate Australian education and training providers to manage the rising demand effectively. The NPL will further ensure that training providers are well-equipped to continue to offer high-quality programs, deliver comprehensive student support services, and best prepare their students for future employment in their chosen careers. As the UGC-accredited academic arm of Nawaloka Holdings, NCHS collaborates closely with Swinburne University of Technology Australia to deliver these prestigious pathway programs in Sri Lanka. Through these programs, students benefit by gaining direct access to over 60 undergraduate degrees across business, IT, health sciences and engineering at Swinburne University of Technology, one of Australia's leading and prestigious institutions. Adding an extra layer of assurance, students who enroll with the NCH's pathway programs will remain unaffected by the NPL, given the institution's partnered affiliation with the Australian Transnational Education. Going in for a short break now, global market updates on the other side. This is a nightly business report. Welcome back to the nightly business report. Asian stocks buck the global trend to extend a China-led rally today, fueled by persistent optimism over the country's aggressive stimulus package and news that more support could be in the works. Brent crude futures were 0.88% to $72.81 a barrel, while US crude shed 0.9% to $69.06 per barrel. Chinese stocks extended their gains on the back of the announcement, with CSI 300 blue chip index last up 1.9%. The Shanghai Composite Index advanced 1.62%. Hong Kong's Hang Sheng Index rose 3%, while the Hang Sheng Mainland Properties Index surged 9%. That propelled MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan to an over two-year high, with the index last up 1.5%. Japan's Nikkei similarly rode the wave of buying and gained 2.5%. The DOW and S&P 500 closed lower as investors awaited economic indicators and signals on upcoming interest rate cuts.
U.S. stocks closed mostly lower on Wednesday as investors awaited further economic data and signals on upcoming interest rate cuts. The Dow dropped seven-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 slid two-tenths, and the Nasdaq ended flat. The three main indexes were positioned for monthly gains after the Federal Reserve's rate cut on September 18th bolstered hopes for a soft landing. But weak consumer sentiment data this week fed into slowing labor market fears, with stocks on Wednesday giving back some recent gains. Stocks on the move included Amgen, down 5.5 percent, following mixed data on two drugs, sparking concerns over heightened competition. Shares of Apple ended lower as annual iPhone sales slipped in China, according to data from a government-affiliated research firm. Shares of KB Home slipped more than 5 percent after the company posted a downbeat third-quarter profit. And shares of Ford and General Motors each fell more than 4 percent after Morgan Stanley lowered its recommendations on the automakers. On the flip side, Hewlett-Packard Enterprise topped the S&P 500 with a more than 5 percent gain after Barclays upgraded the stock's rating. The executive board of International Monetary Fund has approved a new $7 billion loan for cash-strapped Pakistan, more than two months after the two sides said they had reached an agreement. The loan, which Islamabad will receive in installments over 37 months, is aimed at boosting Pakistan's ailing economy. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, in a statement, hailed the deal that his team had been negotiating with the IMF since June. He thanked Rosalina Georgieva, the head of the IMF, and her team for the approval. The global lender said its immediate disbursement will be about one billion U.S. dollars. In a statement, it praised Pakistan for taking key steps to restore economic stability. Growth has rebounded. Inflation has fallen to single digits and a calm foreign exchange market have allowed the rebuilding of reserve buffers. But it also criticized authorities. The IMF warned that despite the progress, Pakistan's vulnerabilities and structural challenges remain formidable. It said a difficult business environment, weak governance and an outsized role of the state hindered investment, while the tax base remained too narrow. And that wraps up the stories we have to report to you tonight on the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates across the business group. I'm Sanya Mudan Nayaka. Thank you for watching. Good night.